come over here and watch her and and watch her and, and think about how does the spider manage to run about its web without becoming entangled in the sticky thread? It's I mean, its web. feet are weird. <laughs> Let's talk about object lessons. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica Smith and I help you simplify home education so you can work wonders in your home. Now this video and this podcast episode are a continuation of a series I'm doing on nature study. Now, if you like this video and you maybe want to get more in depth or you want to be a fly on the wall and see what this would look like in practice with real kids and a real mom, in my Patreon, I am posting videos of real lessons with my kids, a nature walk, an object lesson, and a nature journaling session. So if you want to see that, the link will be in the description box below. So today I'm going to continue on on the nature study series and talk about object lessons. Now an object lesson is when you choose a special study topic. Now this is a seasonal native plant or animal and you are doing an in-depth dive and really observing them and learning more about them. So for example this fall we were studying grass and spiders and so we were looking for those things on our nature wax. Now when we find them, which for grasses it was very easy to find, for spiders it was fairly easy to find that we found lots of funnel spiders and a crab or weaver spider made a web right outside our window. Don't you love it when that happens? I do. I love it when all of a sudden I feel like God is like, oh, you want to study spiders here? I'm going to send them to you so you can, you can learn more about them and love them as much as I do. So we had that happen. And then a huge garden spider made a web in our Swiss chard in our garden. And I'm telling you, this spider is huge and brightly colored black and yellow. And so it has just been a pleasure to learn more about them. So we have spiders and grass as our special study topics this, this fall. And what we're doing is we are observing them for a lot longer than just glancing them on our nature walk. And to help me do that, I'm using the Handbook of Nature Study by Anna Comstock. Now, this is a huge volume. She made this um, for teachers of schools. Now, this was made a long time ago, back when they did study nature. And I'm hoping that it will make a re reappearance in schools today. But until then, I'm doing it at home with my kids. So this was made for teachers. And it has all kinds of species or just like it has birds, it has plants, it has mammals, it has invertebrates, it even has rocks and the sky and water. So everything happening in nature that you can possibly think of and many, many species. For example, here, here's birds and there's the white-breasted nuthatch and then it has the downy woodpecker and so many species of birds in here so if your special study topic is birds your younger children might be just learning about birds just birds in general what makes a bird different than a mammal and your older kids may be studying the white-breasted nuthatch or the downy woodpecker and so you are going to look at that creature or the plant and you will ask questions about them. So how do I find a plant or animal to use for this? Well, one of the best ways is to just look for them naturally on your nature walks. And like I said, I bring this guide along with me. And we went on a nature walk uh, just the other day and we were looking for spiders and we found a lot of funnel spiders in the grass. And so I pulled out my nature study guide and I got out the questions and I had my boys looking at the spider and the web and I asked them questions. Now some of the questions may, may not be relevant and I would just skip past them. And whatever relevant questions there are, I ask them. Now the point is not for them to get a lot of knowledge. Now they may get knowledge, which is great. The point is for them to, for their mind to be awakened and to realize that of all the things that there are to observe. For example, when the questions is, what, um, which legs 
how many legs are in the front and how many legs of the spider point towards the back? Are they shorter or longer? Now, I have never thought uh, to look up to notice that about a spider before. You just think that they have legs equally long and in equal distance around the body. But the length of the legs is going to determine whether they run after their prey, whether they spin a web, or whether they um, hop or jump like a jumping spider. So it's all these things that you want your children to learn to observe. Now asking them these questions while they are looking at the live plant or animal not only helps them gain knowledge, like that's that's a good side effect, but the main point is for them to get in the habit of observing things and to be able to look for things that maybe people just glance over because observing and noticing details, paying attention to something for a long amount of time is not a habit that is, um, that is common among our society today. It is just swipe, 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 and pay attention about three seconds and move on. And so this is a really important habit of the mind that is gained by doing these kinds of object lessons. And again, it helps them wonder and it instills or ignites curiosity. So that is why we are asking the questions and they are answering. We are not finding a spider and just regurgitating everything that we've read about spiders. Now, if you haven't listened to my video about nature study, kind of an overview of nature study, I recommend doing that because I talk about why we don't have to be experts on nature to teach our children. We are actually students just like our children and we're learning alongside them. So you are asking them questions. Now, you can, I like to use this book, The Handbook of Nature Study, but you may think of some that are not in there. And so you can ask those as well. You are asking questions, your children are looking and they're answering. And you can bring things in. So if you catch a frog or your special nature study topic is a frog, amphibians, you are probably not going to be able to follow a frog long enough to answer any of these questions. So in the past, when we have studied amphibians, we catch a frog, we put them in a little tank and we bring them home. And you could either fill it with some water and some pond, pond weed. We did that with frog eggs and we raised the frogs um, or tadpoles and then frogs. And that was such an amazing um, nature study object lesson. We could do it every week. And we looked at the eggs, we looked at the tadpoles, all the changes, and then the frogs. And so we had them in a contained space. So that is something that you're going to want to bring in and have at the table. I did the same thing with a garter snake as well. Now, snails or butterflies or bees, you could do the same thing and bring them in. But I found that it's they're usually stay in one place long enough. You can observe a lot more about them. Now, plants and trees are going to be a breeze. You can do that outside. There's very few things you need to bring inside um, with plant and animal life to do an object lesson. You can but you don't have to. It's usually the things that hop and slither and move really fast that I bring in in an aquarium to study and do an object lesson. And I do about um, either two to four object lessons a month. So once a week. And I talked about this in the overview, but we like to go on a nature walk on Wednesday and we usually go around 10 or 11 after we've done most of the other like main subjects for the day. And then we take a lunch, we go out and spend a couple hours on our nature walk, Look for a special study topic, maybe do an object lesson out on in the field. If not, we'll bring it back, do an object lesson at the kitchen table, get out our nature journals and our calendars and record the plants and animals we've seen. And then we um, get out the nature journals and we record what we learned about our nature study topic. So that is, in a nutshell, what a nature study object lesson looks like using the handbook of nature study. And if you have any questions or need clarification, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to see a real object lesson with kids, the um, my membership Patreon link will be in the description box. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're always notified when a new one comes out.